my mother was very, very serious in terms of bringing up children. But it was not easy because, number one, we had no income. Number two, we had no food to eat. And I remember when I was going through primary school, even paying 20 shillings was a problem for my mother. And many times I saw my mother really cry because these are the children. They don't have anything to eat. I remember one time, I think it was 1984, when there was this famine. Mm -hmm. And uh, for five days, we did not have anything to eat for, for five, five days. days. And I thank uh, the late president, uh, Daniel Moy, because he's the one who sent a uh, yellow maze to Kieni uh, for us to survive. Life is not just about money. Money is a very small goal. Life is about touching people's hearts. Life is about taking care of God's resources. Remember, uh, Lynn, even if you live 100 years, when you go, you go with nothing. Yeah. Remember, you came with nothing. George Washington came with nothing. You go with nothing. Yes. So you have to use the resources God has given you, Lynn or George Washington, to ensure that those resources, they are making other people smile. And that's the package for Optivate. I am standing in one of the most beautiful places in Kenya today, Amani Ridge, the place of peace. But to think the man behind this project went without food for days and is inspiring thousands and thousands of Kenyans today is what I love about this show. I hope you get inspired by today's episode of Inspire Kenya. Hi, Lynn. My name is uh, George Washiri. I am the uh, team leader for Optiven Group. And Optiven, we are doing real estate and other businesses to create some, uh, some work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am the team leader there. Yeah. And of course, uh, George Washiri, you know, I was brought up in a, in a village in Kieni, Nyeri. And Kieni is one of the driest places in Nyeri. So, mm -hmm. but when you are coming up, we are eight of us. And uh, my father died in 1978, and we were all young. So we were left there with our mother, and our mother was not educated. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother was very, very serious in terms of bringing up children. But it was not easy because, number one, we had no income. Number two, we had no food to eat. And I remember when I was going through primary school, even paying 20 shillings was a problem for my mother. And many times I saw my mother really cry because these are the children. They don't have anything to eat. I remember one time, I think it was 1984, when there was this famine. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, for five days, we did not have anything to eat for, for five, five days. days. And I thank uh, the late president, uh, Daniel Moy, because he's the one who sent a yellow maze to Kieni uh, for us to survive. And of course, by God's grace. Mm -hmm. And uh, life was very tough. I remember going through primary school, you know, you are going to school in the early in the morning. And before you go to school, you go to the chamber first to till the land. Oh, yes. Early in the morning, by five, you are in the land tilling. Mm -hmm. And then after, after school at 5 p.m., we had issues with water. So we had to travel 10 kilometers to fetch water. Remember, we could not even afford a wheelbarrow, and I was a boy, and I was carrying a, a water with a kiondo, you know, like, like, uh, like kawaida. Uh, a kawaida, yes. 10 kilometers, mm -hmm. and the life was not easy, and so it was very, very challenging, and I remember one time that, uh, you know, I was in school, I had no role model, no mentor, so me, I just wanted to finish school and go and uh, go for, for some work, even if it is harding. Mm -hmm. Where but, would you guys get the but, school fees? The, it was actually 20 bob those mm. days. Yeah. And uh, it was a struggle. So for us to get school fees, we are going to people's land. So we till the land, and then we are paid five shillings. Oh. So all of us, the eight of us, we go there and then till the land. That five bob, we shall pay the, the fees, and also is the same money to eat. But one time when I was in primary school, I saw my brother pass, and he went to secondary school. And for the first time, <laughs> I saw he was bought a trouser. I remember it was black with some uh, white stripes. Uh -huh. I said, wait a minute. That means if you pass, you get a uh, good clothes. You get a trouser. A, a trouser. This was the first time anyone first time. of you was wearing a trouser. A trouser. The first oh. time, uh -huh. because my brother, my brother was going to Kenya High School, and I said, "Wait a minute, George. That means if I pass, instead of wearing these shorts with the torn back, I can be able to get something neat." That one inspired me. That one motivated me, and immediately I started working hard. I remember it was in class seven. Because before that was always number, the last one, yes. you know, the bottom. And I, start, I worked so hard, but we could not afford kerosene for the night. So I, I was maximizing during the day. Mm -hmm. During the day up to six, I was working very hard. And by God's grace, when the exam came out. Yeah, class eight. Class eight. Mm -hmm. I had women, you know, you were waiting, saying, hey, <laughs> Georgia, I'm a Peter. Yani, I ran. 
only to realize I was top in my primary school called Labora Primary School. And now, hey, <laughs> I said, wait a minute, I have passed. Now the thing was, how do I get fees to go to high school? So I was called to Kaguma High School. So I never liked Kagumo. Mm. So I, I said, can I change? I changed to Chiga Boys. Mm. I went to Chiga Boys. When I went there, the fees was 3,080. We could not raise 3,080 shillings. Oh. I saw my mother calling neighbors to do fundraising. And I remember one lady who brought uh, 10 shillings, another one, 50 bob, and we were able to raise 800. So we went to, I went to Shiga Boys. And for four years, I went through, by God's grace, you know, my mother going to people's land, Harambis, and that's why for me today, if you call me for a Harambe for a school, you will I know. will support. And that's why we find that we have the biggest foundation supporting hundreds and hundreds of students across 47 counties. Mm. We have kids in Mombasa, in Kisumu, Maranda High School, because I know the importance of education. And that way, I said, wait a minute, the people who are contributing, they do not even have enough money. So we went through a high school, and by God's grace, mm -hmm. from 4 came, and I was not sure which course to do, because I had no mentor no role model and the only person i knew i was told by my mother my father was a, a primary school teacher so i wanted to be a teacher mm. so of course uh, when forms came i see a bachelor of education but before i submitted i checked there's a friend of mine who was very wealthy the parents were very wealthy mm -hmm. i checked what he was feeling i saw b com why <laughs> the name was beautiful <laughs> <laughs> i did not know what b com means yes but i i, I changed from uh, B.Ed. To B.Com. And I filled B.Com. And uh, submitted the forms. Mm. When the exam came, because in high school, I was in high school, half, mm -hmm. half you at home because you are chased away, you have no fees. You have no but fees. every time I was in, in school, I was starting up to 3 a.m. Can you imagine? So by God's grace, I passed. And then I was called to a better campus. Can you imagine? Kai. Because I checked B.Com. Yes. When I went to Rwakabete, of course going there was a, it's a big story. I followed that book. Because raising fees, those are the days that uh, bonus was scrapped and we had to pay fees. Raising fees was another problem because we had to do a lot of fundraising. Mm. But when I went to Kabete, for the first time to see the city of Nairobi, hey, can you imagine from Kieni? Landing in Nairobi. Landing in the city of Nairobi. Why are you wearing your trousers this time? Hey, that time, <laughs> <laughs> that time when I, when I created the, the form for, yeah. I was thinking, if I go to the university, what did I do? So I started farming. I was actually farming onions and having those onions and selling them to the local market. So I had generated some little money. So I was able to buy myself uh, some neat clothes. Okay. Uh, slowly, slowly. Uh. So when I came to Kabete, for the first time, I saw very clean people. Yani, neat people. With shoes on. Uh, shoes on. Me, I was under the weather. The lids were dry. I was thin boy. I was a, just a boy from Kieni, you know? But when I looked at them, I said, God has two different types of people, the poor people and the wealthy people. And I said, maybe God one time, I'll be a wealthy person. Mm -hmm. But what I checked when I looked at the people, I said, wait a minute, I may not be able to raise fees to finish uh, four years. So the second week, an idea came. What if I do something to these clean people, they pay me. So uh -huh. an idea of washing their clothes came in. Okay. So I started washing people's clothes. Yes. Na kuoshe nguo. And then they pay me. I remember uh, uh, there were different prices. Nakuoshea, 30 bob. Then I also discovered these people, of course I was born again, and every time we could go for missions, mm. and I could see people really preaching the word of God, and I said, what if I buy a camera and capture the moment? So I persuaded my brother, who bought me Ayashika camera, the mm. one, Yakuzungusha. Ile Ivy. Eh, and yeah. I became a photographer. So every time we go for missions to preach, my job it's was to, to capture the moment. So I was photographer. And photography gave me good money because every photo was 10 bob. Mm. I had a deal with a Muindi in town. I pay Muindi 4 bob, mm. I sell a 10 bob. From Kabeta to town, it was 5 bob. Fair. So the business was good. For the first time within campus, I had 20,000. I said, my Kenya goodness, shillings. Kenya shillings. Caesar Zimbabwe. So, and uh. every time I would think of my mother, now yeah. we, I lost my mother last year, oh. and I could get this money go home and do for my mother shopping wow so one time she asked me hey george in, in our language are you a thief no i said mom i'm not a thief i do business in the university my mother was shocked Utasoma, i told her mom yes Utasoma. and my mom was worried but i told her i will not disappoint you mm. i said wait a minute these are two businesses the third business i also discovered kabete is far from town 
I converted my small room cubicle to be a social library. So I could buy uh, newspapers, magazines, Christmas magazines, and I would charge people to read for a whole day, one wow. shilling. Wow. And I had about 50 magazines. So in a day, I'm earning 50 shillings. Can you imagine? If you are late to submit the magazine, I charge you penalty of 50 cents. Uh -huh. So I had three businesses. By the time I was finished the university, yes. I can tell you, I had no issues with liquid. Yani, I had money. Three businesses. The yeah. time I was clearing the university, Professor Gishaga declared George Washiri as the most entrepreneurial student ever in that Lwakabere campus. Ever. I got a trophy. It's still in the house. You got a trophy? I got a trophy. For washing clothes? Washing clothes. Being a photographer? A photographer and Kinyoshi. And having, hey, you I, even have I used to shave uh, brothers. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, shaving was 10 bob. Hey. So I had three businesses. And I got a trophy as the most entrepreneurial student. Wow. But now, Lynn, things happened. When I was in Form 4, and there was a story everywhere in Kenya, mm. there were no jobs. When I imagined going back to Kieni, I panicked. Would I go back to Kieni? Surely. No water, no resources, no cash crop. Nothing. I panicked. So I picked my four friends. I told them, this is the time we are going to look for jobs. I remember those times, those days were no email. I remember doing 300 jobs applications. Yani, you are writing with your hand. You know, Ushumi Supermarket, that was my first one. Applying for a job. Mm -hmm. And then we divided the city of Nairobi. Me was given by Badogo and the city center. Men, we dropped those letters. When you are dropping, you are dropping four because for your friends. When they are dropping, they are dropping four. That's how I got my first job in Ushumi as an accountant. And of course, uh, after that, by God's grace, I worked uh, there for a year and a half. Went and worked for Lutheran World Federation. I was posted in Kakuma Refugee Camp. Mm -hmm. After Kakuma, I worked for World Vision Somalia. What I was were in, you in doing Wajid. in the I was, refugee camp? We were Accounting? doing logistics, logistics, logistics? for them, uh -huh. food distribution. Yeah. And then after that, I got a job with the UN. I worked for the UN in Sudan for one year. And then I came back to World Vision Somalia. I worked for up to 2008. Mm -hmm. After that, I now resigned and came to full-time business. Yes. Because when I was there, I was also doing some part-time, you know, with my brother. Yeah. And uh, uh, but 2008, I said, now enough is enough. Now I am now move to full business. And I had saved because I'm a believer of savings. I believe that uh, every time you earn something, and you know, I, there's a formula I use and I used to use 70, 10, 10, 10. 70, 10, 10, 10. 10% you tithe. 10% uh -huh. uh, uh, you invest. Another 10% uh, you sort out your insurances. 70% unatumia. You just use the 70%. So I had saved 5 million. So when I was resigning... How long did it take you? Ten years. Ten years. I knew. Now, George, since I've been doing other two businesses, small, small, small ones, this is the time to do business. Hey, and I was happy. Hey. <laughs> so I went to real estate. The first transaction I did, I remember it was Sabaki. The land was beautiful. It was good. I paid a deposit. When I paid a deposit, the balance I ordered to finance through bank. So I did all the paperwork to the bank. So every time the bank would do a search, the search would not come out. Every time I do a search, it was coming out. So I was telling the bank, what's the problem? The land is clean. The bank told me the land is not clean. Hmm. For the first time, I, I had water in my stomach. I panicked. And I remember that time, I did not sleep. I really panicked. To cut the wrong story short, the land was fake. You got conned? Yes. Oh. So the guys uh, switched off phones. I could call in a day, I could call even 50 times. And this was your entire savings in, in 10, 10 years. years. Savings. I went to their offices where they were. I think I was also stupid because the office was too small. It was too small. But the guys were looking serious. To cut the long story short, I think I visited that office more than 15, 20 times in two months because I was in denial. I was in denial. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, things became very thick. Did you have a family then? Yes, I have a family, a, a baby and, yes. a, and a wife. And what questions are they asking you? I, I have a very supportive wife, you know, because even after losing that money, she never scolded me or told me you are stupid. She stood with me. Mm. But the thing was very tough for one year. I had no money. I had no business. I lost all my friends, yani literally. I lost all my friends. I could call my old friends. They couldn't pick the phone. Oh. And uh, it was one year of dryness. I remember one time I went to Huru Park with my Bible, a pen and a paper. Mm. And I told God, God, now this is the eighth month. 
things are tough. I couldn't even get 50 bob from uh, in Maradaima where I was staying, Sunrise Park, to town. And life was tough. I started becoming hungry. This is a guy who was earning good money in the UN. Sasa, I have no even money to buy chips. And friends are gone. Friends are gone. I had only two friends. My pastor, Reverend Philip Katutu, and my wife. The rest disappeared. And the heavens shut. Okay. There was nothing happening. I started applying for jobs. No replies. I remember one time I said, wait a minute, George, you have done CPA up to K. You are a BCom. You have masters. Nobody was responding. Not one month, one year. And I said, wait a minute. One time I told God, God, if you give me money again, number one, I'll serve you. I'll be tithing. Number two, I'll serve the community. Number three, I'll be humble. I'll never say that George is now uh, doing well. No, it's not me, it's God. And I made that commitment. That's how the Optimum Foundation was born. Mm -hmm. And that's why we find that today, 5% of the money we, we get from Optimum, 5%, we give it to the foundation. It it's a full uh, uh, organization. Wow. And then all the books I've authored, the hundred percent of the, the books I've authored, I've authored two books, Sorry mm -hmm. and Canigo, my story, mm -hmm. yes. and uh, how to start small and build an empire. Mm -hmm. The entire money goes to the foundation. And look at the old people, we look at the education. Right now we have a big project, the whole of Kenya for physical challenge. Mm -hmm. We are giving wheelchairs. Even next week we are going to Kajira to give about 10 wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. Because that's a commitment I made when I was in Uhuru Park. When with a notebook. With a notebook, a Bible, and, and a, pen. a pen. You know, and I said, the resources that George will have, these resources are to serve the community, the resources to support God's work, and they are not my resources. And I always say that uh, the resources that uh, we have, we are custodians, we are a channel of these resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, I think that was my lowest time in my life. And that's why today, I, I, I don't like poverty. I don't like uh, seeing people poor. And that's why we say that even the, the time we do the project, we do it with the future in the mind because I know what it means to lack. I know what it means to lack a job. I know what it means to lose money. And that's why you find that uh, we do a lot of mentorship. Like this year during COVID, mm -hmm. I've been mentoring 3,000 young people who are business startups. Every Thursday, I give an hour just talking to them and advising them on yes. how to do it. Because for me, I had no mentor. So I messed up a lot of many times. Because other than losing that uh, 5 million, I had started other businesses. You know, I was doing water packaging with yeah. a partner. Uh -huh. The partner called me. Aye. Went with the entire money. Yes. You know me, I, I trust people very fast. So we say he went to the bank, say, any party can sign. The partner went there, we, we were making money. We was doing the marketing mm. and carried all the money. Mm -hmm. So the business collapsed. I have done Kahaya. You know, those Kahaya yes. was the top thing. And Kahaya was very, very challenging. I remember yeah. one time showing my car on a TV that, uh, you know, it was arrested. It was carrying some opium. So I had hired the guy who was uh, selling bangi. And uh, the following day I was arrested, put in cell. Oh. Thank God I had a contract that we had signed with this guy. Yes. Otherwise, I would be in commit right now. I wouldn't be here right now. As a drug seller. And, and, and as a drug seller. Mm. And I tell people, be careful on the contract you sign. Don't just, even if it's your brother or your sister, sign a contract in a business. That one saved George Washuri. Of course, I have done, uh, the, uh, you know, tours and travel. Hey, George, what have you not done? <laughs> <laughs> I actually done, have done actually 15 businesses that failed. 15, 15 businesses? 15 businesses that failed. That's why I used that example, that even if you fail today, don't give up. Tomorrow can be better. Keep trying. You know, you keep trying. And when you fail, in fact, I sympathize with people who don't trust in God. Because for me, what is not for trusting in God? Yes. Maybe you could have given up. Because even after losing in real estate, I still had a voice, go back to real estate. And uh, we came back. And by God's grace, from the year 2009, 2010, God has been doing miracles upon miracles. Now, Optiven has grown big. big. You know, it, uh, now George Washuri is, is, is irrelevant. By the way, even if George is not in Optiven, nothing will stop. We have hired qualified, competent people than George Washuri. Talk of leadership. Yeah. So people who can manage uh, Optiven without consulting. In fact, the, today morning, I have not received a single call from all, the entire Optivate because they know what to do, they can make decisions because they always say that uh, the best leader is the one who develops leaders. Hey soldier, And of course by the God's grace that the company has been uh, expanding. And uh, this is just the beginning because the way I see we have a vision of uh, being peace setters in social economic transformation. We say we are not only in real estate, 
We are in a business of transforming communities. We are in business on social transformation. Mm -hmm. So everybody who works for Opelia knows, yes. what are you doing? You're not selling plots. We don't sell plots. We say to Kenyans, we don't sell plots. We empower communities because that is our role. That's why we wake up every morning. When you wake up in the morning, you don't wake up to sell a manage. No, yes. you wake up to cause that transformation. That's why, Irene, you have seen, even the way we, we, we package our product, we package it in a way that you may think we are funny. Yeah, like we, this particular we were just project. laughing yeah, yeah. because we are sitting at a place. This is free land. Yeah, one acre. In, in, in Kiambu. Plotine. Yeah, exactly. And you are telling me these four plots would cost roughly 28 million. 28 million. So this is just 28 million you've let go. Yeah, we have given to the community. But that's not how you look at it. We look at the future. Mm -hmm. And not only this one, Lynn. Inside the project, we have 10 acres whereby you are also given to people who are buying. These 10 acres take care of your events. The children are coming because we are looking at 100 years to come. Because life is not just about money. Money is a very small goal. Life is about touching people's hearts. Life is about taking care of God's resources. Remember, Irene, even if you live 100 years, when you go, you go with nothing. Remember, you came with nothing. George Washington came with nothing. You go with nothing. Yes. So you have to use the resources God has given you, Lynn or George Washuri, to ensure that those resources, they are making other people smile. And that's the package for Optivate. Yes. Here is the community. No, man. So, if come here, 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 come two acres. Eh. Eh, because we pick up back, of course. Yes. And then uh, some customers are going to come here. The road, look at the road. You may talk about the road, you may talk about the road. God. Optiven, you guys, you've won awards after awards after awards after awards. What do you think sets you apart from other real estate agencies? Because right now, Kenyans are scared of even buying land. They might be conned the way you are, but you guys, you have zero scandal. What sets you apart? Number one, of course, is uh, God's grace. Amen. <laughs> we must thank God. Amen. Number two is a, is a vision. We are very particular on our vision. Being peace setters in social economic transformation. And then we see the reason I wake up every morning is to economically and socially empower and transform the communities. That's why we wake up every morning and everybody working for Optiven knows it. We don't wake up to sell properties. Yes. Actually, we don't sell properties. We settle Kenyans. Number two is uh, leadership. They say that a leader is the one who is able to inspire people and encourage the people you work with. You respect them so that when they come to Optiven, they are not working for George Washiri. They are working for themselves. Mm -hmm. And for us at Optiven, we don't call our employees employees. We don't have staff. They are partners. They are partners. Akina Mushi, you see here, these are our partners because we ask ourselves, who owns Optiven? It's not George. I don't own Optiven. Optiven is owned by Optiven uh, partners who are staff. Optiven is owned by them. Once they have the ownership, there is no, they will be creative, they will be innovative, they will be working for themselves. Yes. And uh, we have also given them uh, uh, you know, freedom to make decisions. We say, when you're working for, with Optiven, you have a head to think. Bring those ideas, we implement them. And then you have delegated, you know, by the way, the beauty. like for me, you've asked me, hey, George, by the way, how much money is the account? I don't know. I don't know. We have delegated to the, our CFO. He's the one who manages our finances. How much money do we pay taxes? We have delegated. I don't sign checks myself because... That's a mistake we do as entrepreneurs. You want to be everywhere. You, your nose wants to be where the checks are being signed. Yes. You want to be in the, in, the, in the bank. My job is just loving our customers, loving our partners. We, people call them the staff. And going out there and spreading the word of hope. That's why I say when I retire, I will retire in the foundation. Whereby I go to Tukana, I go to Kajiado, I go to Nyeri, yeah. and support these people that require our support. And I also tell people that uh, uh, some people say, George, do you want politics? I love eh, politicians, eh, but eh. I have no ambition to become a politician. My ambition is to touch as many people as we can through the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lovely. This part of the garden, yes. this is no man's land. It's half an acre. This is a no man's land. This is a no man's land. No man's land. What are you doing here? I'm going to go home. 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 And then, all the days, no man's land. This is a, a borehole. Yes. As a dad mm. and as a husband, how yes. do you balance all this? Do you have moments where you just take your wife out for a date and you are like, Leon, Mimi, Tuna, Wewe? Yes, I have two boys. Yes. Uh, two boys and one girl. My <laughs> first born is, in, uh, is a candidate. Yes. Uh, fourth year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, form four. The other one is a candidate, class eight, Alex. Uh, the first one is David. Mm -hmm. And then a small girl called Jael. Yeah. And Jael has media. 
So she uh, loves media. She has media. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, <Jan. laughs> uh -huh. And what we do is every Wednesday, it is a coffee date with my wife. Oh. We just even if we have no agenda. Yes. In fact, we usually do a joke. Twenty two to Angariane. Every Wednesday, we have a, 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 a night, a day with her. That time, no phones. Phones are at home because phones are is the current opium. A distraction. A distraction. Yes. And then I have time to drop my kids to school. And uh, of course, I go home early. <laughs> I wake up very early, go mm. home early to play with my daughter because yeah. the other boys are now they are big. Yes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and once in a year, we go for out there with the family, the entire family. We visit countries. <laughs> uh, we go to Mombasa, go yeah. to Naivasha. Yeah. And they are happy. And they are happy. Yes. What inspires you? I think what inspires me is when I see, when I see people progress. You know, when you come for mentorship, you know, and you progress, I get excited. When my staff, we call them partners, buy a car or they build, hey, I am very excited. I like progress. When people progress, this really inspires me. I have three mentors. Yes. This guy is uh, Manu Shadaria, is my mentor. The reason why Manu inspires me, he's now 92 years. Last week I was with him somewhere. Mm. 92 years. And the man is still advising government. Wow. You know the secret of a uh, long life? Mm -mm. Giving. Giving. When you give, mm. God adds you more days. Say it again, <laughs> say it again, say it again, say it again, Mr. George. When you give, when you give, God, your life is, you stay longer. God gives you more days. Mm -hmm. So when I look at this Manu Shadaria, you go to Gatrud, donated by Manu Shadaria. You go to the investment of Nairobi, donated by Manu Shadaria. He has touched many lives. And this guy inspires me. And that's why we, that's why we started Optiven Foundation. Yes. To touch as many lives. And we don't segregate. We go even Muslim. We have Muslim girls we are supporting. Full scholarship from Form 1 to the university. We don't choose. The entire counties. There's mm. no county we don't have children mm -hmm. that we sponsor. Mm. Because life is about giving. Mm -hmm. If you don't give, you become salty. You become like a salty, a salty lick that doesn't give. And the people who give, they get more. Look at the Western countries, people like uh, Bill Gates. They are, give, they are funding the, this pandemic to ensure that we have the vaccine. As they fund, as they give, more is coming. coming. To and I, I encourage entrepreneurs and business people, give. And giving not necessarily money. You can even give advice. You can give opportunity for our young people who are looking for jobs to come and work for your organization. Up yes. even, we open doors for university graduates. I think last year we had over 50 university graduates working with Optiven, attaching them with the managers to ensure that we are also mentoring them and molding them to be better than George Washiris. Because yeah. for me, I want to see a million George Washiris. If you can have a million George Washiris to do what we are doing, this country, we change it. Because the people to change the country, it's not the government. It is lean, it's George Washiris, it is you. We are the people to change mm. this nation. Wow, yes. lovely. Who are the other two people? Well, the other, the other mentor of mine yes. is a guy that I met him once and my life changed. Uh -huh. Dr. Wale Akinyemi. Oh. I, man, Lee, let me tell you, when I was down, when I was depressed, when I was stressed, when my head could not think, this man gave me five sessions. And this guy promoted my self-esteem. He was actually meeting me at Selena. Hey, I had not slept in Selena. Hey! And the guy was giving me a number of mentorship. I remember one time telling me, young man, George, what can prevent you to be like Coca-Cola, so that when we drive along Mombasa Road, we see billboards written up to even. When we go to Thika Road, we see billboards written up to even. What can prevent you uh, sponsoring leagues, the La Liga? Hi, the guy who is being told to sponsor. <laughs> the guy has no even 50 bob in the pocket. <laughs> but the guy pumped air on me. Me money too, me <laughs> money. And Wale Akiyemi pumped energy. Yes. The time I was going home, that's the first time I said, George, you are now a billionaire. A billionaire who doesn't have a 50 book. <laughs> My was think I'm crazy. Yeah. And I started not confessing. I go in front of a mirror and say, hey, George. Hey, George, you are a millionaire. That time you are broke. You have nothing. You are temporarily out of cash. Dr. Wale Akiyemi, because I know he's watching this program, is a man I respect. He's a man who really supported me. Mm. I went to his all his forums in KICC. I followed him on social media. The guy really built my service team and I owe him. And I think this guy, when he calls me, I go running because he's still my mentor. The third one is Dr. James Wangi. Mm. You know, when I lost money, I start now borrowing money, you know, two million, three hundred. And one time I, I asked somebody, link me with this man. I just 
son to Gwen Bilia him. Not even talking. I have no words to talk to him. This is a big man. The equity. Hey. Dr. James hey, Mwangi. Like a joke. An appointment was, was fixed. Lean. That night I did not sleep. I did not sleep. I am going tomorrow to meet Dr. James Mwangi. In the morning, I remember I even had forgotten the tie. <laughs> so I made a mistake. <laughs> I, wore, I wore a red tie. My wife told me, don't be funny. <laughs> Throw a red tie. You are going to the boss. Yeah. When you are going to the boss, when you are going to be the hood, don't put red. Put another color. Because yeah. the boss can be having red. Mm. Both of you, mukona red. Who is the boss? Oh, yes. Nikatoa. Yeah. Nikaweka green. Mm. Up to them. <laughs> I was tiptoeing, tiptoeing. I went to equity party, kwa lift. I, for the first time, I, I was almost shaking. I'm not fearful, I'm confident, but almost. And I enter that room. <laughs> <laughs> that guy <laughs> served me tea. I was melting. <laughs> he went, prepared coffee, wow. served me tea. Wow. Man, you can imagine the atmosphere. He gave me 15 minutes of talk. The guy changed my thinking and told me, hey, Washiri George, I know you are doing a uh, business, but do you know Equator can give you 15 billion? I've never heard of a billion. Not even 10 million. Not even 5 million. <laughs> but when I left that office, yes. I left there knowing that George Washuri, a boy from Kieni, who has gone through problems, you can borrow. I, we went to the office. We had a small office at Gilfidan. We did a proposal of 40 million. <gasps> a proposal of 40 million. We took to the bank. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> so we bought the land. When we bought it, I was wondering, how do we sell this? I was the, the own marketer. I was the driver. I was the messenger. I had a young man called Motua. <laughs> so an idea came. Why can't I go to church and start marketing? But at night, an idea came. That's why it's good to think at night. Mm -hmm. What if you do a partnership with a bank? Ah, I did an email. You sell to bank staff this property at a minimum margin. We did it. Within three months, we had no property. Wow. Now, the, the, the poor man <laughs> who <laughs> started seeing money. Yes. And that was the first miracle. And the miracle has been happening. So, Dr. James Mwangi inspired me. Mm. And that's why I say that, uh, you know, Equity has supported us in terms of uh, loan facilities. I think last year, we were voted the best loan payer in the entire bank. No default. We, no def we, we have never defaulted. Mm. We are the best pair. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a very good relationship with the Equity Bank. Yes. And I must thank uh, Dr. James Mwangi. Mm. Even today, he really inspires me, number one, because of taking risk, job creation. And the guy has done an amazing job in this particular country. He has awards, awards, uh, you know, many awards in terms of uh, his impact in the community. And mm. I also learned from him for, on uh, serving the community. And that's why we find that uh, following these mentors, Optiven, we have over 20 awards. Yeah. You know, the other day we got the award for our foundation, the best foundation. We got an award for 2014. We were number one in SME, the top SME in Kenya, mm -hmm. 2014. Mm -hmm. And then we have many other awards, diaspora awards, you know. And all this is because of God's grace. It's God's yeah. grace. Yeah. You and God. Mm. I don't think there's a sentence you complete yeah, without it. God. Mm, yeah, What's the importance it. of, you know, having God even when you become successful? Mm. And would you consider yourself a spiritual person? Yes, I would say I'm a spiritual person. Mm. I serve as an elder in our church. It's mm -hmm. called uh, Destiny Life Church okay. in Siokimau. Uh -huh. And uh, my pastor has been my pastor for many years, you know, <laughs> right from our wedding. You know, Pastor Reverend Katutu, mm -hmm. a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He's also a board member of our uh, organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has been my support when things are not okay. Yes. And he has really supported me. So mm -hmm. I serve. So I serve there as an elder. And uh, I love serving, you know, because all said and done, life is a gift. You know, we do not create ourselves. God is the one who created us. So I believe that there is God in heaven. I believe in the Bible. I read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have seen that uh, prayer works. Yes. You know, that's why for us at Optiven, we dedicate one day in a week, Wednesday, mm -hmm. one hour for prayer. Mm -hmm. And some people will do prayer and fasting. That's optional. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has really contributed to our success. Yeah. Because we know that uh, we have a father who owns the universe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Before we conclude, when you look back, what are you most proud of as George? I think when I look back, when I see what uh, has happened at Optiven, I just thank God that we are able to provide hundreds of jobs. You know, we are able to support the orphans. We are able to support the physically challenged. We call it uh, mobility that brings a smile. 
we are able to plant over three million trees, mm -hmm. you know, across our projects and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We are able to support people, even during COVID. We are supporting 300 families every month through direct cash injection. So when I look back and I see what God has done, I think I feel very inspired. But of course, number one, I don't, I don't, I don't get inspired because of money. Money doesn't inspire me. Uh, even when I have money in the account, I don't know. Uh, money doesn't inspire me. But when I see a community change, when I see that child smile, I'm a Marisa Shule, and I say, I, have, I got these grades. Wow. I was sponsored by a foundation. Like there's one I really love called David Odiwol from another high school. He got an A. Now he's going to be, doc to, to be a doctor, you know, and he writes to me every time. When I see his text, <laughs> I get really inspired. Yes. And remember, this, this boy had no parents, you know. Those are the things that really inspires me. Mm -hmm. But the things that make me very sad is when I see young people out there saying they are, you know, there are no jobs, they are frustrated, and they have degrees. Yet they can, co they can form uh, groups and they start something. If you look at the ICT industry, the industry is massive. Companies are looking for people to put them on uh, online. They can be able to do it. And I've seen a, a few more that are do, already doing it. Mm. So if you're there, you're a young person, just think, what can I do? And I can tell you, there is always something to do. You may do it for free. You can volunteer yes. initially. Mm -hmm. And then as you volunteer, people are seeing what you're doing. And that's what you do at Optivate. People come as volunteers. But you find the attitude is good. Because for us at Optivate, for you to join the team, we first of all, we don't look at the skills. We look really? at the attitude. Mm -hmm. Is your attitude right? How is your passion? Do you love what you do? How are your values or the character? Once the three, you pass the three. Now we ask you, what have you done? We have gotten people who have done, tot done totally different courses. <laughs> but because of their attitude, we have done promotions at Optivate just because of the people's attitude and honesty mm. and values. Mm -hmm. We have a manager na have a certificate. Why? Those three things. Those three things. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Gratitude is important. It's important. <laughs>
The people who read these books, they are prospering. Yes. It's 1,500. The entire money goes to, to Optiven Foundation. Yeah. This is a foundation that is transforming lives yes. across 47 counties. And then number three, people who are looking out there. Mm -hmm. Life is made up of choices. Let's make the right choices. When you make the right choice, stand by that particular choice. And then finally, as business people, as career people, take care of your health. I say your health, your wealth. You can be wealthy, but you are sick. But when you are, you are healthy, you are wealthy. Mm -hmm. And if you have two legs, you have hands, you have eyes, say no to poverty. Mm -hmm. Because the people who make it, they start humbly and they keep going. Maybe you are there in the slum. Mm -hmm. You are part of the foundation support. Mm -hmm. You can be able to be the supporter of the people or where you are living by either doing counseling to these girls who are getting pregnant early. Mm -hmm. You can be able to go to, to your high school and give counseling. We have always something to give, not necessarily money. We can give advice. We can give encouragement. So we have something to do. And then finally, let's do the very best. God created us with a purpose. Our purpose is known. We can be able to do exploits if only we say yes. If only yeah. we say yes. yes. Wow, what a show. Thank you. I feel sometimes I'm the student, even wow. when I get to host people, I feel like I learn wow. so much. And I want to take this uh, opportunity to say thank you for even taking your time. Asante. Time is money. Yes. That time is money. <laughs> and yes. you've actually been very, 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 uh, you've given us a lot of your time. I forgot and to I, say my contact. And your social mm. media handles sure. because you are going live yeah, and sure. I've been privileged to watch you wow. a couple of times. So I want Humble. my audience also mm. to benefit Fantastic. from your live sessions. Wow. Yeah, please do. Well, thank you very much. Uh, once again, my name is George Washiori. Washiori means many goats <laughs> in our Greek. <laughs> George wa Washiori. Washiori. And uh, you can find me on my uh, tabs, mm. George Washiori Facebook or George Washiori YouTube. YouTube, we have a lot of videos to encourage you, to inspire you, to give some energy, to give some oomph as you do business, as you do career. And I've also available on, uh, as a, on a blog, www.georgewashiori.com, www.georgewashiori.com. Mm. I do a lot of blogs right there, and you can be able to read them. And of course, you can also join me every Friday, Friday 4 to 6. We are live on Facebook, and uh, you can be able to pick some uh, some encouragement, some wording, some yes. inspiration. And uh, for those who are doing business, for those who are in career, we have a program every Thursday, three to four. And this year, we we have mentored uh, a hundreds of students who are graduating on 16th of December this at the GMC team. place. Mm -hmm. After this, we are launching the second one in January. This one is going to target the business people, the entrepreneurs, and it is free. This is service to the community. You can plug in. And uh, you can find us on uh, that particular platform. Yes. And we are here to inspire. We are here to give back. We are here to produce millionaires, the people to change this country, yes. the people to change our villages, the people to change Africa, because God has given us sufficient resources. Yes. If you are out there, you can link up. If you want to be positive, link up with George Washiri. Link you. up with George Washiri. I love how you say that. Link up with George. I think Pia Music is going to be a musician. Musician. <laughs> Maybe you're prophesying. Maybe. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much, Thank guys, uh, for watching this episode of Inspire Kenya. You guys will have to admit, I we have not done an episode like this one before. I hope you guys, you are inspired. And I want to challenge you to get these books. I, I read a lot, too. So I know the importance of reading. So my audience, if you are watching, please get these two books. The most important aspect of this is that the money goes to charity. So by even reading and buying this book, you are helping someone else. My name is Lynn Googie. Till next time, bye-bye.